Well, this is uh, going to be um, this is going to be interesting because uh, this is a dream that I had. Um, you know, I've I've shared brothers and sisters uh, dreams that I'd had and how um, they were very significant. And I don't use this lightly. I'm very careful when it comes to dreams. And I was I was discussing this with brother Jake that you know um, we don't just share dreams and say it is from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, because we're never sure. So what we do. Uh, very often in, in our group, brothers and sisters, and anyone that is listening to confirm what we're saying out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, as the scriptures clearly say, we need to have a confirmation that this is not our own imagination at work, that we're not we're not playing any, you know, um, games in, oh, okay, well, this might be significant and this must be, you know, God speaking. We always want to check with our brothers and sisters to see, you know, is this God speaking to us? Is he leading us in this direction? Is he trying to communicate something very important to us? So um, I had discussed this with um, our brothers and sisters in the Marco Polo group. I discussed this with uh, brother Jake. I shared my dream. And um, interestingly enough, I received a quick response from brother Jake and he had found something very significant. So um, I'm going to share the dream. Um, in the dream, now this was on Saturday night. Um, well, Sunday, that was Sunday morning uh, the, uh, at 3 a.m., approximately around that time. I can't tell you exactly uh, the precise time, but it was on Sunday uh, the 3rd, around 3-ish. Um, and um, I, had the, I had a dream, a very... Um, a very troubling dream um you know on the surface and um i i saw this this map and i was looking i was actually it seemed like i was flying but i wasn't really flying but it it was as if i was flying and i'm sure you've um you've seen sometimes in movies like the cameras when they're, they're taking a view from the helicopter and then you can see uh, like this aerial view well this is what i was seeing and i i saw this map and it was interesting because this map looked kind of um, like these old maps, but there were like there were colors to it as well. There were borders. I could clearly distinguish the borders. It wasn't just a map and, you know, it was it was all um, blurry. There was borders, clear borders that were in that map. And I could see like I'm, I'm watching you right now. I'm watching the screen, the letters that I've got on my screen. I could see the letters Moldavia. So that's M spelt M O L D A V I A. Now, I saw this country, Moldavia, and while I was looking at it from a bird's eye view, suddenly I was transported inside that country. And what I saw was a group of people, um, a multitude, actually, it was a huge multitude uh, of of um of of um men women and children that were fleeing this country so there were it was like an exodus Foreign Minister, thank you very much for talking to Sky News. Uh, let me ask you first of all to, to characterize this moment for Moldova. Moldova has been in a very difficult region for you know, at a very difficult time. Uh, we're Ukraine's most fragile neighbor. Of course, we've been affected in multiple ways. And now, of course, we see that the situation is getting worse. It's getting worse in Ukraine because the war drags on and uh, it's, it's affecting more and more people. And as you could see in the last few days, with um, some explosions taking place uh, in the Transnistrian region of Moldova, we are also increasingly affected by, by this regional uh, uh, destabilization. Let's talk about those explosions first of all. Um, who was responsible for them? Well, we don't know. It's not a part of... Um, legally, the Transnistrian region is part of Moldova. De facto, our authorities don't have control. So. Uh, we don't control, we don't have access to CCTV cameras, to forensics. Uh, we have some working hypotheses, but we're not in a situation to attribute uh, clear uh, responsibility for these attacks. Uh, what Madam President Sandu said publicly is that our understanding is that 
whereas the absolute majority of residents of Transnistria want to live in a peaceful uh, environment and they don't want to end up in a war zone, there are nonetheless forces inside Transnistria which uh, uh, hope to benefit from rising tensions and they have staged this provocation which was the attack on uh, in Tiraspol. To what extent does the future of your country as an independent nation depend on Ukraine's success at pushing back Russia? Well, I think the future of the entire continent uh, rests on the capacity of Ukraine to maintain uh, its political system, its country, its resilience, and in this sense, uh, the fate and the future of every country in this part of the world, of, of entire Europe, uh, depends on, uh, on how this war ends, on where it ends and when it ends. Are you asking the West, uh, Western nations for, for help militarily? Are you asking for weapons? Uh, we have, uh, we're a neutral country by our constitution. This constitution was adopted in 1994, but neutrality does not exclude and prevent us from uh, cooperating on security, on foreign policy, uh, on defense matters. Oh, we're not at the stage of talking about uh, weapon supplies, but of course we have, uh, for a long time, we've had very good cooperative links uh, between our Ministry of Defense and our partners, between our police and our partners, and those conversations still continue, and there's projects where our military cooperates with NATO member states. Russia has, has now openly said, and the Russian general a week or two ago, openly talked about an exit through to Transnistria. They are trying to, to join the dots east to west through southern Ukraine and potentially link up the breakaway state of Transnistria. Uh, that, that surely must make you here in Kisinau feel very vulnerable. Statements such as the one made by this uh, Russian general are, um, uh, are really worrying. Uh, it's of course um, completely unhelpful, of course, but creates new tensions. Uh, formally, the Russian Federation uh, dissociated themselves from this statement, so formally Russia says that uh, that position has not been an agreed uh, message. At the same time, we all know that the situation is quite volatile, uh, volatile it's risky, we constantly see voices inside Russia calling on, on a kind of bigger and more ambitious war aims. At the same time, it's also clear that the, the war in Ukraine has not been going according to plan. So uh, here intentions can be intentions, but the realities on the ground always uh, tend to differ. I think it's fair to say that, that much of the world misjudged Vladimir Putin uh, and his intentions. Um, from where you're sitting here in this crucial geographical location, what do you think he is trying to do and what he might do next? I mean, we're not in a position to speculate or predict, but it's our responsibility to be preparing for the full spectrum of uh, scenarios and contingencies, and that's what the government normally does. So if you ask me what are we preparing for, I'll ask you, I'll tell you that we're preparing for positive scenarios, but also for very negative ones and everything in between. Uh, and that's our obligation, irrespective of what our countries, our leaders plan to do, or maybe they don't plan now, but they will plan in a couple of years. Uh, the responsibility of a government, of a security sector, of a defense, uh, of, of the defense, of the institutions responsible for the defense of the country is always to be planning for the full spectrum of threats. And to that end, you don't rule out asking for weaponry to defend yourselves if it came to that? Listen, we're not in a position of now prejudging of how things will evolve. I'll tell you very frankly that it's also dangerous to prejudge and speculate, uh, but it, we are nonetheless preparing and we have been preparing for all possible contingencies. Um, and what exactly we do within this preparation, we prefer not to discuss in details when it comes to things well, to, to the future, which we, of course, cannot predict. Hey, dear brothers and sisters, uh, today we are uh, the 12th of April 2022, and um, I just want to share this. Um, it's it's a very important message that I want to share to you. And um, this is uh, concerning a dream that I had 
uh, on the night of the 6th. It was between the 6th and the 7th. So 5th and the 6th. So I'm, um, I'm definitely sure it was around that time. And I, I believe it was the 6th, the night of the 6th. And um, I had the dream where I saw uh, Russia and I saw Putin and um, the Russian government making threats that they would send nuclear bombs towards Europe. And um, France was one of those targets. They would send nuclear bombs and the situation uh, was, was a heavy tension between the West and uh, Eastern Europe, Russia. And um, they, um, there was, they were actually um, speaking. I think through, through um, in the tele, you know, on the on the television, they were saying that they were going to send these nuclear bombs on Europe. And um, I saw uh, in the dream, I I was like uh, brought to a to another um, scene, and in in this next scene. I saw a forest, a large, large forest. It's almost like it, it was Siberia, because I know in Siberia they're like they got huge, um, you know, forests, and uh, in Russia as well. But it, it looked remote and, uh, and 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 a deserted place, but lots of trees, and uh, and there was snow as well in that uh, in that area. And um, I saw. Um, men in these suits, in these hazmat um, suits. Um, they look like these suits when, you know, you might have seen some of these uh, uh, videos where um, these um, professionals, they go uh, to volcanoes and they go near to the, uh, to the, to the, to the pit where the, the lava is brewing and they have this uh, silver sort of suit. Well, they had this silver suit with um, these gas masks on and they were experimenting with a bomb. And when this bomb blew, uh, when this bomb, you know, had, had um, exploded, uh, I saw like this lava, it was very strange and it looked like this um, um, graphite, or, uh, oxide graphite. I um, don't know if you've seen some of those experiments where they had graphite and they kind of they, they burnt it or they mixed it with something and then you had like this goo not this goo but this like this um, this um, sort of um, foam uh, and this this um, a lot a lot of this uh, uh, it, it looked like foam you just you know growing and growing well you had that sort of um, that that sort of um, mixture with this lava looking like liquid and uh, I knew it was like they were experimenting with a weapon, with a, with a, with a bomb. And um, then they, had, they were like, you know, um, like the, the, the forest lit up and it was like the, the forest was uh, on fire. And they tried to contain um, the, the flames because it was burning all of the forest. And then I was um, next transported to this uh, separate scene where um, I saw the Vatican um, making a peace deal with Russia. They were, a, they were, a, they were, a, 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 it was a, like a confederacy, it was like a, an alliance with, with many organizations and the Vatican was like a, a spearheading this, this, um, this, uh, this sort of, um, a, this uh, council and um, they were um, asking Russia for peace uh, and as the dream unfolded I saw like there was a they, they managed to make a peace deal with Russia so this is what I saw next uh, the Vatican made a peace deal they made peace with Russia after those threats of Russia um, threatening the West with uh, these nuclear bombs. Russia attacks not only physically. It has been waging an information war against the world and peace for a long time. 
вы получите ядерный удар по территории Европы в, в случае, если вы соберетесь там с какой-нибудь миротворческий контингент НАТО создать, в случае, если вы соберетесь его куда-то там вводить и прочее, прочее, да, это будет ядерная война. А да. это было и сказано французским Это будет ядерная война. Вы должны это февраля. понимать. Значит, храбрые поляки от вашей Варшавы не останется за полсекунды ничего. Храбрые немцы, так сказать, да. Храбрые эстонцы, храбрые прибалты. Кстати, по поводу храбрых прибалтов. Вот в Калининграде, я знаю, сейчас большие проблемы на границе. Может быть, актуальным становится вопрос коридора до Калининграда? Коридора, сухопутного коридора до Калининграда. А но, почему нет? Ну, если уж до Приднестровья Мне пробивать, кажется, мне кажется что государство под названием Литва и государство под названием Польша ведут себя слишком нагло. Слишком нагло. И не понимают еще, так сказать, да, что вот э, на самом деле с ними можно разобраться быстрее, чем с Украиной. А Потому жили? что вопрос не коридора – это вопрос локальной военной операции, и это гораздо проще, чем все то, что мы сейчас затеяли на Украине. Да ну... Turn off Russian propaganda. Say no to fakes and war. Уж мы говорим о, о таких вооружениях, то есть вопрос в том, что ее еще нужно избить, попытаться. Это несбиваемая ракета. То, что у них, он говорит, у нас это ограничено, у нас есть чем сбивать. Посмотрим. От Калининграда до Берлина 106 секунд, от Калининграда до Парижа 200 секунд. Вас интересует Лондон 200-200. Вот, я про это. Поэтому им эта картинка надо тоже показывать. Знаете, ребят, вот смотрите, ну хорошо, вы придали. вот вам картинка. Читайте по секунду. Что ты успеешь? Ага, куда? Да, да, все. Здравствуйте, пролетело. Ну, пускай думает. Секундомер ему дать. На, 200 секунд отсчитать. Да, вот так надо снимать. По-другому никак. Они...